like the Charles Dickens classic, A Christmas Carol, in this season, this Christmas month, we have looked at two of three guides already, seeing if these guides are just taking up too much space in our stories. The first week we looked at the first guide, which is the guide of fear, and what happens when the spirit, a spirit of fear gets a hold of our hearts. And last week we looked a little bit at our thoughts and more the idea of what it is that we behold. And today we want to look sort of at our thoughts and our feelings and what happens as they come out in our actions. And as we do that, I've got a question for you. And the question is this. Have you ever had a song get stuck in your head? Have you ever had a song get stuck in your head that you don't want stuck in your head? A song gets in there. Have you ever had a song get stuck in your head that you don't want to get stuck in your head that you have no idea where you've learned this song, but you know every lyric and every note and every melody and it's stuck in your head? There's something powerful about music, and there's something powerful about the repetition of hearing something again and again and again. And I want all of us to beware, in particular in the season that we find ourselves living through, I want you to beware of the melody of melancholy. I want you to be cautious of the fret of fear. And the bass drop of division is beating loudly in our world today. And poet Mary Oliver, she once said, attention is the beginning of devotion, something that gets our attention. And I was reading Luke chapter 2, and something caught my attention. And this is not a new message. It's not new information coming to you, but it's reminding you of something that you have heard from your childhood and that you know to be true. We just sometimes need to be reminded of it. Like an instrument being put in tune, we want the Holy Spirit to just freshly touch and tune our hearts today. In Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 14, it says, In the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at night over the flock. And the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy. And this is what caught my attention that I want to share with you today. Don't be afraid, because I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. I want you to notice that it doesn't say for some of the people. I want you to notice that it doesn't say it's good news for people who love God. It just says for all the people, for those who are loving towards God and those who are angry towards God. It just says this is good news. This is not news that comes from earth that we sing to heaven. No, this is news that comes from heaven to earth. And it's an entirely different song and it's a sound that the world desperately needs in 2021. It will be for all the people. Today in the city of David was born for you who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you that you will find the baby wrapped tightly in cloth and lying in a manger. See, Christmas isn't a feeling, it's a person. It is the person of Jesus Christ. It is heaven in the person of Jesus come to earth. And suddenly there was a multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven in peace and shalom on earth. And this is what it says. Peace to people that God favors. Another translation of verse 14 says it this way, perhaps in a more familiar way. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, goodwill towards men, goodwill towards humanity. And the question I want you to ask yourself today is this. In my actions, in what I do, am I singing harmony with heaven's song or has the song of my soul kind of got knocked out of tune? Is it singing something different? Because if there was a gift that humanity could graciously give one another this Christmas season, I'm telling you, it's not found in any store, including Amazon. They don't have this gift. It's not caught in supply chain issues and will be here one day, this gift. No, this gift is a heavenly gift that in order to give it, you first got to receive something. Because the song of heaven starts with receiving good news. And hearts that receive good news then can give this gift, which is goodwill to all people, not just some people. Now, I can graciously embrace how heaven sings this song consistently because It flows from God who is unchanging. James chapter one, verse seven reads this. Every good and perfect gift is from above, 
coming down from the Father of lights. And so if you're driving, whether it's on Taffy Lane or any lane, and you see lights, Christmas lights, all across our city, don't just see electrical wires and bulbs from Canadian Tire. Don't just see that. See light in the midst of darkness. See color where there was once no color. See the beauty and the radiance that shines only at the backdrop of darkness and understand it is but a symbol of a greater light that came into the world. Coming down from the Father of lights, and here's what it says. It says, who does not change like shifting shadows. No, the reason heaven can bring good news for all people is because God is perfect. He is holy. He is just. He is gracious. He is good. He is unchanging because you cannot improve upon who God is. There is no better God. There is no God 2.0 because 1.0 is perfect. And the story of Christmas is that God came in human flesh. So I can understand how that is good news and it is good news given for all people. I can understand that. And I can equally understand, again, because I can get that it's good news because God's actions flow from his character, from his being, who he is. They don't change because of who he is in his perfection. Now, you and I, ooh, we are created in the image and likeness of God, but we're not God. And if, I could, if you could turn to the person beside you, I would say turn to the person beside you, but I'll just say reflect in your heart. Aren't you glad that some of us aren't God? Now let that one sink in for a moment. If some of us were, scratch that, if any of us were God, we'd all be in trouble. See, I get how heaven can sing that song, but my heart, like an instrument that gets banged, that gets dropped, that gets moved, oh, it can quickly become out of tune. And I don't know if you've ever heard an out of tune instrument. Not pretty. I don't know if you've ever heard an out-of-tune voice. Equally not pretty. But somehow God says it's a joyful noise. So we make it. But the truth is every single one of us, none of us go, none of us go through life without getting knocked around and our hearts get out of tune. Sometimes because of the things that we do, the dumb actions that we do, and some because of the actions of another. And some things are just things that are larger than our agency. They're just out of our control. You can wake up today and think, man, I'm going to have goodwill for all people. And then someone cuts you off in traffic and you shift like a shadow. And they become the object of your attention. And you wish them a Merry Christmas in a way that no one should be wished Merry Christmas ever. <laughs> No, a reason that my soul and my song can so often be out of tune is because my actions also flow from my being. But my being, like yours, is not perfect. It is either actively being formed to be more Christ-like or it is being deformed by the world and sin in which we were born. And so here's a question I want you to reflect on just on this 19th of December. Do my actions of my life, do they bend in the way of seeing God's shalom, his peace on earth as it is in heaven? Is that the way that my actions, do my actions bring as it is in heaven, peace on earth? And if you're like me and I reflect on a question like that, my answer is sometimes, but not all the time. With some people, but not all all people. But yet we see in the Christmas story that the song in heaven is that it is good news and then it is goodwill towards all people. It is God's heart to see shalom on earth, to see peace on earth. And man, if there's one thing our world needed, it is peace. But until the Prince of Peace rules on every heart, we will see no peace. No, we oftentimes start to sing inferior songs than the song of heaven. We begin to bend our actions perhaps towards a lesser peace, an inferior peace, a singular peace ruled by my truth, my thoughts, my feelings, and not by a grander vision that God gives us. 
Today we find ourselves living under the guise of liberation, progression, progressive, freedom. Culture today that we find ourselves living in, just like a song that can get stuck in your head and you don't know where you heard it, but you heard it enough or you caught it enough and all of a sudden now you're singing it and it's in there and you may not want to sing it, but you're singing it. The same too can happen because we are in this world, but we have to learn how not to be of the world. And because we're in the world, oftentimes you and I unknowingly can begin to sing the song of this world rather than the song of heaven. And the song of this world is starting to sound a little bit more like this. That under the guise of freedom and liberation, we are now separating sex from love and life from sanctity and children from parents and vaccinated from unvaccinated and BIPOC from those who are white and rich from those who are poor and male from those who are female and gay from those who are straight. Followers of Christ are being separated from the church. I don't need to be in church. I just need to know Jesus. That's not in the Bible. The next generation are being separated by the wisdom of our elders, and we are calling this progress and freedom, but I agree with Chris Butler, who says this isn't liberation, this is destruction. And you wonder why we're all so very weary. Is the story of my soul good news for all people, or is it good news for people in power? Is the story of my soul good news for all people, or is it people just in my political party? Is the story of my soul good news for all people or just people who agree with me on whatever issue that might be? We can have various issues. And yes, even all the things that I just shared, there's lots of discussion and lots of wisdom and lots of truth and lots of understanding and lots of various things in there. Yes, even room for difference and disagreement. But church, division is never the friend of the body of Christ. It never leads anywhere but to fallenness and equal brokenness. So we may believe this, but when we treat one another differently because of that, our hearts get out of tune with the song of heaven. In Renovation of the Heart, Dallas Willard says, as we turned away from God in our thoughts, so is in our thoughts that first this movement towards renovation of the heart occur. Thoughts are the place where we can and must begin to change. And like we shared last Sunday, what we behold really gets a hold of our hearts. And I want you to know that there is a melody that is being sung that will feed every anxiety, every frustration, every fear, every bit of division in your heart. And here's what I want you to know. It's a really catchy tune. But it's one that we are called as Christ followers to resist. And we're called to tune our hearts, not to that sound that is so familiar. We are called to tune our ears to a sound that is unfamiliar. It is the sound of grace. It is the sound of good news. And it is the sound of goodwill for all humanity. There's much in the gospel and there's much in life that I do not understand. That shouldn't be a shock if you know my intellect. That was a joke. (laughs) Let me just point that out with clarity. I'm I'm actually a really smart person. (laughs) Surprised you didn't know that by now. But there's much in life and there's much in my experience, like you, that I don't understand. There is mystery in following Jesus, right? Because there's times where we pray. And God's word says this, but we experience that. There's mystery. And anyone who who attempts to explain all mystery, one word, run. No, there's mystery. But I want you to know something more than mystery. Not everything is mystery. Not everything is unknowable. No, no, no. The Christmas story is a God in heaven who came to earth so that he can be known The Christmas story may feel like fable, but I want you to know it is rooted in historical reality. It is not the same as the North Pole and elves. 
It is an entirely historical story with historically real people like Mary, Joseph, Zechariah, and Elizabeth, and a group of shepherds that we're going to touch on in a second. Why do I say that? Because for some, whether you're here or whether you're at home, when you read or you hear us talking about the Christmas story, you can write it off as fable. But it isn't fable, it's fact. And here's what I think is true, and I love what Glenn Scrivener says, and I'm going to quote it in a second. But here's what is true, whether you're listening today and you're agnostic, atheist, or a follower of Christ. Every single human believes in virgin birth. Just depends which one. Christians believe in the virgin birth of Jesus. And atheists believe in the virgin birth of the universe. Everyone believes in a miracle. You just choose your miracle. That's why there's no such thing as someone who does not have faith. Every single one of us has a faith system, a belief system that is rooted in something that they weren't there about, they weren't there for, and they cannot explain fully. We oftentimes are Christian or mocked again because, oh, you believe in a virgin birth? Well, yeah, well, you believe in the beginning of a universe from nothing. I digress. The New Testament is a story based on events in history, not just mystery. If you pay attention, though, to most Christmas stories, including the terrible Hallmark ones, yes, it's a running joke for three weeks straight. You're welcome. Lori was watching one yesterday graciously on her iPad while I watched the hockey game, and it was a gift that she gave me that was good. (laughs) And I looked over. I only watched it for about 30 seconds on her iPad, and I said, I've seen that film. (laughs) No, the New Testament story is based on history, as I said, not just mystery, but if you pay attention, most Christmas stories, they're the same story, and here's the story. Do better. Be better. How were you this year? Were you naughty? Or were you nice? And here's the question. How naughty is too naughty? Like when I was a kid growing up, I would really understand that. And basically, I would really boil that down to, like the week of Christmas, I've got to be really good. Because there's no way they're going to remember like naughty from September. But if you ever feel like your soul is weary, it's because you're always being measured The story of the world is always the same. Are you good? Are you good enough? The story that we have been anchoring in these last month and the story we anchor in every single Sunday, the song of heaven is not are you good enough. The song of heaven is his grace is always enough. The song of heaven is actually Jesus alone is enough. One of the things that I love to do every single Christmas, sometimes I do it at Easter as well, is if the story is, have you been naughty or nice, if that's the the height of it, then I want you to imagine yourself. I want you to imagine yourself standing in line about to get into heaven. And it's a long line because you want it to be a really long line, a really big line. You're standing in line. By the way, you don't have to stand in line to get into heaven. Just go with the story for a minute, okay? But I want you to imagine yourself standing in line in heaven, waiting into heaven. You look up ahead as you're waiting, because it's a really long line to get to the front, you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting, and way in the distance, you see Mary, and you look at her, you catch Mary's eye, because you've got some time to kill. You say, Mary, Mary, did you know? And Mary looks and says, yeah, I knew. That was a joke. <laughs> did you ever hear the song, Mary, did you know? We sang it about nine minutes ago. Listen, I have another confession. I don't like that song at all. (laughs) Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? I feel like Mary goes, "Uh, yeah, maybe not all the specifics, but I knew. How did you know? Well, an angel showed up and told me. (laughs) And it actually says in the Bible, she pondered all these things in her heart. Church, rest your heart this Christmas. Mary knew. (laughs) She knew. Mary, did you know? Yeah. Okay, so we'll leave that joke aside. It, it fell like, oh boy. I saw that going differently in my mind. But you're in a long line and there you are. And in front of you is a gentleman by the name of Bud. 
because it's a long line. And if the story is, are you good enough? Then you would ask Bud, like, Bud, how good of a person were you? Because here's all I know. And the line to getting into heaven, if the story is good enough, and I want to know how good Bud is, because I'm going next after Bud. Bud, how good were you? What? How good were you? I was pretty good. How good is pretty good? Like, how many lies did you tell in your life? Good. Uh, To the best of my knowledge, 17, but I could be lying now. (laughs) Bud, Bud, how, how much money did you give? Bud says, I didn't know I had to give money. And you go, "Mm, I gave 4%. I'm better than Bud. If it's based on how good is good enough, then that's the thing. Now you turn around behind you in line and you look and you just see a bunch of awesome, nameless people behind you. And then you you, you miss someone because they're really short, really short behind you. You didn't even see them when you turned around and you look down and standing behind you is Mother Teresa. Does anyone want to change places in line? Why? Because all of a sudden, Bud in front of you, he's not that great. This woman gave more than 8%. She's the only one on the planet who's ever lived up to the hockey coach or the football coach, whatever. We're going to give 110%. And every one of us goes, that's not possible. All I can give is 100%. That's all I have to give. But we say it anyways. Mother Teresa gave 110%. But if the story is all about if you're good enough, depending who you're situated between is how you're going to define your life. And here's what I want you to know. The story of this little baby, he grew up into a man and he was nailed between two people who weren't good enough. And with no time to make amends, one chooses to mock and rail and the other chooses to turn and just says to the man on the middle cross, would you remember me? Would you have compassion on me? Would you have mercy on me? Both of them, the story says, they rail on Jesus. But do you remember what the story in the sound of heaven is? It is good news for all people. It is not just good news for people who treat God well. It is good news for people who treat God well, and it is good news for people who treat God poorly, but in a moment of reflection, turn their hearts towards him and say, remember me. And Jesus turns and says, this very day, you'll be with me in paradise. Church, this is good news. Jesus is good news, and he brings goodwill towards all people, even the people who mistreat him. A moment ago, I said there's a story about Mary and Elizabeth and Zechariah and Joseph, and we listed off names that are known in the Christmas story. But one little, one little note, one final note that I want to highlight is this. The story that we read today where we see the good news of great joy for all people. God appears to shepherds. And here's the thing about shepherds. I don't know any of their names. I have no idea what their names were. And so on this Christmas story, on this Christmas day, I don't know if you feel seen or known or loved. I don't know if it was your actions or the actions of another that make you believe or made you believe somehow that you are less than, that you are not quite enough. I don't know the answer to those questions if you just feel like a face in the crowd. But this I do know. A Christmas love came down. Christmas isn't a feeling. It is a fact. It is a person. And he knows you by name. Psalm 139 says, this God knew you before you were in your mother's womb. This God knows every hair on your head. And that is not whether you have hair or are bald. Isn't the issue. The issue is this God Though your name may be known by some or your name might not be known by any, you need to know that your name is known by God. 
And he loves you enough to live and to give his life for you and loves you so much that he invites you after receiving good news to join him in singing a new song, a different song from the world around us. You want to change how you act towards God, maybe yourself or others? Well, you got to start by receiving good news, which is grace in truth. Grace is unmerited favor. We don't deserve it. Truth is, we don't deserve it, but we need it because all of us fall short. This Christmas season, we have set three invitations over the past three weeks. If you wish to break up with what you see in your life, if you wish to change what you see in your life, excuse me, you may need to break up with the spirit of fear. And the spirit of fear is a whisper that is growing louder every day, especially in this pandemic season. Pay attention to what your heart is beholding because what you behold will grab a hold of your heart and shape it. And today I would say plant yourself in a grander story, a heavenly song. Plant yourself in an imperfect church community that lovingly calls us to see others that can lovingly and gently say, that's a beautiful song, but something's out of tune. Because life-centered, good news, received, and goodwill towards all people. Man, that is a song and a sound that the world desperately wants the church to sing again. So I'm going to invite you to stand as we pray. Put your hands out in front of you like this, just as an act of surrender. And I'd be honored on this December 19th to lead you in prayer. Together, let's say, dear Jesus, thank you for giving me the gift of unmerited favor. Holy Spirit, help me live and love and be more like Jesus. Tune my heart to the sound of heaven and help me sing the song of goodwill towards others. Amen. You may be seated as we just take a moment and sing over you.